In this lecture, we are going to learn about how do you create a value stream map for a software development process. So to create a value stream map is basically to map out all the activities of the process that you want to analyze. And one of the tips is to go to the place where work is happening rather than just sitting in a room and just mapping out the, uh, all the steps because you will realize that a lot of times you will miss a lot of steps that actually happens at the work. So the recommendation is that you go to the place where the work is happening and as you're watching the work, you start noting down the activities uh, and how long does it take. So you identify what of the, what of the steps are value added which means that they are adding value to the customer and what are, which of the activities are not non-value added, which means not adding value to the customer. And you, you list or you identify who is involved, uh, what kind of, how long does it take and what work is involved. So you kind of list and identify all of those things. And in terms of syntax and terminology, so let's take an example. Let's say the value stream involves four activities. Activity A takes five minutes and it's a value added activity. Activity B takes five days and it's a non-value added. Activity C is again a one hour and it's a value added activity. And activity D is one day and it's a non-value added work. So let's say we our unit that we're gonna use to show the time is in minutes. So in this, and we assume that one day is equal to eight working hours. So we're gonna treat one day equal to eight hours. Uh, of course, one hour is 60 minutes. So let's say if, if the activity B says that it's gonna take five days, then in minutes, it's going to be, you know, five days times eight hours per day times 60 minutes. So that's total of 2,400 minutes. So if you were to create a st uh, value stream map for this a, B, C, D activity, it's gonna look like something like this. So all the activities that are value add, we're gonna show on the bottom, and then all the non-value added activity we show on the top. So as you can see, the first activity A was five minutes. So we are showing that um, the five minutes as the first, you know, uh, first point here. And then the activity activity uh, B was five days, which is 2,400 minutes. And then activity C is one hour, so it's 60 minutes. And then activity D is 480 minutes. So five minutes, 2,400 minutes, 60 minutes, and 480 minutes. So that'll be the uh, value stream map for, for this uh, small value stream. Now, another key uh, um, matrix that is used in value stream is called process cycle efficiency, which defines the efficiency of your value stream. So it's equal to value added time divided by the total of the cycle time. So as I talked about value added time is the time spent in doing things that add value for the customer. And then non-value added time is the time spent in doing th things that didn't add value for the customer. And the cycle time is the total time taken for the value stream. So in this case, the process cycle efficiency will look like this. So we have the um, we have the five which is a value added and the 60 as the value added. So we added five and 60. And then the total cycle time is five plus 2400 plus 60 plus 480. So that's right here. So if we do if we do this calculation, it will say that it's about 2.2% process cycle efficiency in this case. So now let's take an example and see how we're gonna calculate. We're gonna go through and create a value stream map and we're gonna calculate the process cycle efficiency. So let's say there was a company called ABC Healthcare Corporation. It has about 15,000 employees. The IT department for this company has about 2,000 employees. Um, there is a group called Database Support Group, DSG, that has about 30 employees. And there are about 120 application development teams in this organization. Um, and each of these 120 database uh, application development teams, if they require any database related activities like creating a schema or creating a table or adding a column or any of that kind of activities is needed, they interact with this database support group to do their database work. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna create this value stream for the work of database support group. So all the requests that are coming to the database support group 
uh, you know, how, what are the steps, what are the process, how long does it take? Because it was kind of a bottleneck for the organization and they wanted to take a look at how long does it take and if they can make that process a little bit more efficient. So let's take a look at the value stream map. So uh, let's assume we went to the place where the work was happening and we were following the activities that are happening on the ground. So here is what they, let's say we found out. <clears throat> Uh, the developer submits a ticket to get a database work done and they'll specify what they want to get done. Um, then ticket was waiting to be looked at and prioritized and that averages to be of about five days. And then there were key managers from different departments uh, who will attend this weekly prioritization meeting because all of these application teams are submitting requests. So there is some kind of prioritization required as to which one to do and not to do. So key managers from different teams were getting together doing this weekly prioritization meeting together. It's about an hour. And then the prioritized items wait for being assigned to a database administrator. So that's about a day. So after the prioritization has happened, within a day, the items were assigned to the actual database administrator who is going to work on it. So the prioritized item is finally assigned to the database administrator and that activity takes about 30 minutes. So if we were to create the value stream map for um, this step so far, uh, we're gonna look something like this. So as you can see, five minutes to submit the ticket, five days to wait in the queue, 60 minutes, which is an hour to prioritize, and then again, uh, another day for it to be uh, in the queue for it to be assigned, and then 30 minutes to actually assign the item uh, for a database administrator to work on. So let's continue. Um, so after that, once that is assigned, so database administrator looks at the request and sends an email to request additional information in a template specifically designed for that type of request. So the database administrator has, has looked at the request and say, oh, I need, this is this type of request, so I need this additional information from the application developer. Then the application developer provides the information requested that takes another five minutes and then request again wait in the queue to be picked up again for three days um, and then database administrator picks request and set uh, set up meeting with the developer for additional information again a five minutes so so far let's see what the additional story value stream map will look like so in this case we started with you know five minutes to send the template, another five minutes to for developer to provide the information. Now this could be treated as a value added um, uh, work, uh, but I treated that as a non-value added, but you can put both of these together as a value added activity. And then again, you're waiting for three days again, so that's 1440, 1440 minutes. Um, and then the last is the five minutes for administrator to again pick up the request and setting up the meeting with the de uh, developer. Then continuing, so now the developer waits for the meeting. So that's again average of two days. And then developer and database administrator meets to finalize the exact requirements. And then database administrator will put the request back into the queue to be worked upon because he's currently working on some other request that he or she is gonna finish and then come back to this request. And then the database administrator works on this request and informs the developer once done. So again, if you continue our value stream map, um, it's going to be, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, developer waits. So that's about 960 minutes and then 15 minutes uh, for them to meet and finalize the requirements. Then again, waiting for another day, which is 480 minutes. And then finally, the 30 minutes to finish the request. So as you can see, we went through the whole process on the ground and we created the store value stream map. Uh, for this whole process. So now let's calculate the efficiency of this model. So process cycle efficiency is value added time divided by total cycle time. So as you can see, the value added time was five minutes, uh, 60 minutes, 30 minutes, five, five, 15, and 30. So we add those five, 60, 30, five, five, 15, and 30. So that totals up to 150 minutes. And then the total cycle time is all of this plus 2400, 480, 5, 1440, 960, and 480. So if you all add all of them, it comes out to be 5950. 
and that means the um, process cycle efficiency is 150 uh, divided by 5915 that comes out to be 2.5%. So then the next question is how can we get better? Can we improve? And so just without making any major change, I think we can improve uh, the performance of this team. Um, so what can we do? So I think one thing we can do is, um, as, you, as you saw that, first the developer was submitting a request and then later on when the database administrator was finding what kind of request it is, the developer was sending another template for the developer to fill. If we can merge these two together so that when a developer is submitting the ticket, it says what type of request are you filling and then shows these additional fields for the developer to fill in so that we can get the whole information in one request. So instead of five minutes, maybe it will take 10 minutes. So we added the 10 minutes here. So no major change, just uh, merging the two requests into one. And then it will stay the same ticket waiting to be looked at and prioritized for five days. Uh, but then all the key managers are getting together. Now in this meeting, not only should we do the prioritization, but we can also assign the database administrator right there. And so instead of one hour, maybe it will take two hours, but at least we'll get the whole work done in that one meeting. So um, if you look at the uh, value stream map for this process, the improved process, it takes 10 minutes. Then it takes again the five days, which is 2,400 minutes and then it's going to take 120 minutes, which is two hours to prioritize and to assign it to the database administrator. Then we don't need to do these two steps. The database administrator sends an email, so I cut those two steps. And then the request is going to again wait in the queue to be picked up again um, at the same time, three days, because we don't want to make any major change, just simple change without impacting anything. Um, and then the database administrator will pick up the request and set up the meeting with the developer for additional information. So that's another five minutes. So again, um, the, what, what's adding here is this three days, which is 4,400 minutes, and then the five minutes for the database administrator to set up the meeting. Then developer waits for the meeting. Again, two days, we are not making any change. But then after that, why don't we merge the finalizing the requirements and doing the actual work right there in that meeting? so that if they have any additional question, it could be resolved right there and they can be just done with it. So developer and database administrator meets to finalize the exact requirements and works on the request in the meeting itself. So in 45 minutes, instead of uh, 30 minutes and 15 minutes, they just finish the whole thing together. So again, and then you don't have to do these two steps separately. So the value stream map will look something like this two days to wait for the meeting and then 45 minutes to get the work done. So as you can see, we, we significantly simplified the value stream mapping uh, or value stream map or the process. So let's see if it really helps in the process cycle efficiency. So if process cycle efficiency, again, it's the value added time divided by total cycle time. So in this case, the value added time is 10, 120, 5 and 45. So that totals up to 180. And the total cycle time is all of these numbers and 2400, 1440, and 960. So that totals up to 4980. So the process cycle efficiency will be 180 divided by 4980. So that comes out to be 3.6%. So as you can see, without making any major change, without changing the wait time of five days or three days, we were able to improve the process cycle efficiency uh, by at least a percent, so it's 3.6%. Um, but can we improve any further? I think we can. So some of the things we can look at to improve this further is why does it take these five days? Can we reduce that time? Um, can we reduce these three days wait time? And can we reduce this two days of wait time? So I think the next step could be to work on these three items. Um, and see if we can reduce those uh, time even by a day in each can significantly improve the process cycle efficiency.